Okay, guys, this is slide 9 uh, of our 60s Vietnam unit, um, and it is on one particular year of the decade, 1968. Um, rarely has there been a year with so many bad things happening um, at once. 68 was a horrible year. Um, so let's look at it sort of chronologically here as we go through the, uh, through the year. Right. In March of 1968, President Johnson will make a startling announcement. Um, he will announce to the country that he will not run for re-election in November. Okay. He is eligible to. Um, he served less than half of Kennedy's term and one of his, so he was eligible to run for re-election. But Vietnam has undone him. The Tet Offensive has just happened Two months earlier, um, the protesters are gathering more and more and more steam. Uh, he can't get done what he wants to get done at home because of the cost of Vietnam. Uh, he's just had enough. Vietnam has beaten the man down. Um, so he announces that he will not accept the Democratic nomination uh, for president. That throws things completely into chaos because we're now, what, uh, about eight months out uh, from the election, and suddenly the Democrats don't have a nominee. We'll get back to that in a moment. Okay. Um, the following month, Martin Luther King is assassinated. Um, in Memphis, we've talked about this in our Civil Rights Unit, so it should be a quick little review here. Uh, King was in Memphis to give a speech. Um, he was shot and killed on uh, the hotel balcony at the Lorraine Motel by James Earl Ray, white supremacist. Um, so the ultimate in peaceful nonviolence meets a very violent end. Okay. Uh, that is April. Now, back to our political discussion, because much of this is about politics here. The Democrats suddenly are without a candidate. Okay. Um, it really comes down to basically two candidates, um, two senators. Minnesota Senator Eugene McCarthy, um, that's not the McCarthy of McCarthyism, okay, different guy. Um, Eugene McCarthy and New York Senator Robert Kennedy. Yes, that's Bobby Kennedy, Robert, RFK. Uh, Bobby Kennedy, John Kennedy's brother, had been Attorney General. Um, now, Kennedy is most certainly probably going to win the nomination. Okay? Um, he is the front runner, he's popular. He's got the sympathy vote because his brother had uh, uh, had been shot and killed. He's a Kennedy, so he's got the name behind him. Kennedy quickly becomes the front runner. However, in June of 1968, Bobby Kennedy is shot and killed. Okay. Uh, you see the picture here in the uh, corner. There's Kennedy. Um, he had just won the California primary, which is the biggest one, had all sorts of momentum going toward the convention. Um, he was making his way out of the hotel where he had just given a speech thanking all his supporters um, when he is shot and killed by a man named, no, that's not a typo, his name really is, Sirhan Sirhan, same first, last name. Uh, Sirhan Sirhan is a Palestinian. Now, you might be thinking, what in the world could Palestinian possibly have against Bobby Kennedy? Well, during his campaigning, um, Bobby Kennedy had been very public about his support for Israel. And he said, if I become president, um, the United States will put its full support behind Israel. Remember, Palestinians don't like Israelis. To create Israel, we took land from Palestine and so forth. Um, so Sirhan Sirhan figures he's going to do the Palestinian people a favor and kill Bobby Kennedy before he can even become president. 
So now we've lost the presumed Democratic nominee in Lyndon Johnson. We've lost the frontrunner for the Democratic nomination in Bobby Kennedy. And let's see, June, July, August, September, October. We're only five months from an election. We're only two months from a convention where they're supposed to choose a nominee. And now it's up in the air again. Um... We're down to Eugene McCarthy and Johnson's vice president, Hubert Humphrey. Okay. Um, And the Democrats are going to Chicago for their convention in August. Okay. Um, The Democrats are meeting in Chicago all the media will be in Chicago. Usually these conventions are very anticlimactic. By the time we get to the convention, everybody knows who the nominee is going to be. Uh, It just turns into a big party, a pep rally to kick off the final leg of the campaign. But in 1968, that's not the case. In 1968, we don't know who the nominee is going to be. There's suspense. So every media outlet is there, radio station, TV station, newspaper, magazine, everybody is there. So if all the attention in the country is focused on Chicago, who else is going to Chicago? The protesters, the anti-war protesters are going to Chicago because that's where all the free media is going to be. They're screaming for an anti-war candidate in November. So here you see the picture. First of all, at the bottom of the page, hello Democrats, welcome to Chicago. And the Chicago police, there to make sure law and order is upheld. Anything but law and order takes place. The protesters clash with the police officers. The protesters show up at the convention center And Mayor Richard Daley um, tells the chief of police, get those protesters out of there. Bust some heads if you have to. And they do. The Chicago Police Department wades into the protesters. They fire tear gas at them. They start beating them with billy clubs, nightsticks. Um, it's, it's It's an ugly, ugly scene. And every bit of it is filmed from the hotel rooms in the convention center. News stations are filming out of their hotel windows the whole thing. It ends up on national television. It looks like the Democratic convention is in complete chaos. Even though the Democrats are inside holding their convention and everything's fine, the protesters are being beaten senseless outside. The Democrats will get associated with the violence in Chicago so that the real winners in Chicago are going to be the Republicans. So, we get to the election in November. As almost an afterthought, um, Vice President Hubert Humphrey will get the Democratic nomination Um, We're going to have a third-party candidate here, the American Independent Party is going to nominate um, former Alabama governor George Wallace, and because civil rights under Johnson had been uh, furthered so far, Humphrey was going to continue civil rights. Nobody was sure what Nixon was going to do. But um, the South is determined they'll not have civil rights forced on them again. So they're going to run their own candidate. Former Alabama governor George Wallace, who ran on a um, segregation platform. He had a great campaign slogan. Segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. 
Um, anytime he was asked about anything, his answer was, we need more segregation, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, the, the question was about the economy. We need more segregation. Well, what are you going to do about foreign affairs? Segregation. Didn't matter what the question was. That was his answer to everything. Um, and as bad as that was, it, it's even worse. His vice presidential candidate was um, uh, the former head of the Air Force, a guy named Curtis LeMay. You don't have to know this, but uh, when asked about what he would do in Vietnam if he were in charge. His answer was, bomb Vietnam back to the Stone Age. He wanted to drop every bomb we had on Vietnam. North, south, it didn't matter. Kill a ball. Okay? Um, so George Wallace and Curtis LeMay aren't, aren't going to get far. Okay? Um, our third candidate here is Republican Richard Nixon. He's back. Yes. Um, rarely is there a second chance in politics, and Nixon had lost to Kennedy in 1960. Um, he's back in 1968. Um, he has reinvented himself as a candidate, and thanks to, you know, all of the chaos going on here in Chicago, the violence associated with the Democrats, um, Nixon will win a fairly easy, um, uh, electoral vote, but he only earned about 43% of the popular vote. So clearly, over half the country is not in favor of him. Um, but he wins enough electoral votes to become the president. The real loser in 1968 presidential election, the real loser are the anti-war people. Because all three candidates, Humphrey, Wallace, and Nixon are all pro-war. They all want to continue the war in Vietnam. So it doesn't matter who the anti-war protesters vote for, they're going to lose.